thank you for joining me for another episode of Sam's Tech Stuff. Today, we'll be taking a look at my backup storage server built for all of my YouTube content, such as the raw video, picture files, thumbnails, and finished videos, as well as some other documents and important software. Before we get into that, if you're interested in gaming PC builds or home lab and server content like this, Get subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon below this video for video notifications every time a new video lands on the channel. If you want to support the channel, check out the Amazon affiliate links in the description below when you're shopping on Amazon. This is free to you and it helps the channel earn more income, which helps me produce more content. I'm making this video kind of as a hybrid server build video and just a general PSA. It's important to have some kind of backup for your important data, whether you're just a regular home user, a tech enthusiast, or even if you're running a small or medium business. You might remember I already have an Unraid server in my server rack, but just storing all of my data in one place on one server is not really a reliable data storage strategy. A lot of different things could happen to this server and my data could be gone forever in just a matter of a couple of seconds. While my main storage server does run the Unraid operating system, which leverages two parity disks, in addition to solid workstation grade hardware, there's always the chance for catastrophic events with regard to my data. For example, power surges that my UPS cannot handle, the possibility of water or fire damage, and less likely, but still possible, theft or even building damage. The most likely threats to my data in this server are probably silent data corruption and honestly, me. Probably way more likely that while working on the rack or another server or just some other project for YouTube, I could accidentally power the system down while data is being written to the array or accidentally disconnect the machine from the network. So for all of the reasons that I listed, a second physical storage server is definitely something I need and you probably do too. Here's the system that I'm going to be using as my redundant storage server. Everything is housed in this older Antec case. I picked this case because it does have two 120 millimeter intake fans. I wanna make sure during parity calculations and just writing in general that the drives stay nice and cool. I'm reusing my super old integrated CPU and motherboard combo kit. It's a Biostar NM70i-1037U. The CPU is a dual core Ivy Bridge based CPU that runs at about 1.8 gigahertz. The processor's base clock is 1.8 gigahertz and it does not support any boost clocks. The motherboard is an ITX form factor, so it is quite small in these cases. It supports up to two DDR3 memory modules, has three SATA 3 gig ports, and one SATA 6 gig port. There's only one PCI Express slot on this motherboard, which I will be using for future drive expansion to allow for more hard drives. An 8-channel RAID card flashed to IT mode will let me expand this to about 12 total drives in the system, with one or two of those being a parity disk of some kind, and possibly a cache disk if performance requires it. This integrated motherboard and CPU kit is long discontinued, but many other motherboard manufacturers sell something like this in each CPU generation. This setup is extremely small, and it's extremely power efficient, so for a task like being the backup storage server, powering this server on once probably a month, I really like this type of hardware. For now, I don't actually need a RAID card as I plan on running Unraid again on this server. I'll be connecting each of the two terabyte hard drives to the integrated SATA ports. The reason that I'm going with Unraid again is that it's extremely easy to manage. The cost is really not that high and I'm quite familiar with it. This data that will be on this backup server is pretty much write once and probably realistically read once. Hopefully never though, just in case my main server ever does run into issues. As I mentioned, I'm starting with just a few 2TB hard drives, so I'm mostly backing up just the important YouTube production files, as well as certain other footage like B-roll. I'm expecting to put roughly 1TB of data on the system to start, 
And as I upgrade, I'll be looking into potentially some used enterprise grade SATA or even SAS drives once I install a RAID card. You'll probably notice that unlike the rest of my home lab videos, this server is inside of a standard ATX case and not a rack mounted server build. I chose a standard ATX case as I do not actually want this server in my rack right next to the other one. It's a much better idea to back up all of your data and store that in another server in another physical location, preferably far away. In my case, I will either have this server live in a different area of my house for a little bit, and then once I get a remote synchronization process established, I'll probably put this server at my parents' house. They're sufficiently far enough away from me so that they're not in the same area, and they can keep this server safe in either the basement or the first floor. If you're running a home lab like I am, what are you using to store your data? Do you have a backup for that data? Let me know in the comment section below what your data storage strategy is and what you thought about my strategy or my builds. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and let me know. I create home lab tech and gaming PC videos every week, so if this kind of stuff interests you, definitely get subscribed to the channel. Until next time, you can follow me on Twitter at Sam's Tech Stuff, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Sam's Tech Stuff, or on the website samstechstuff.com.